what we're going to be looking at here is an imputed or estimated interest rate on a note that's being exchanged. Now this is where you have to approximate an applicable interest rate on a note that differs from the stated rate of interest on the note. And where the market interest rate is not determinable and the note is not marketable. So what you have to do is you must impute an interest rate on this note that's being exchanged. That is you must estimate an interest rate for this note. It has a stated rate of interest here but there's a real interest rate that, uh, that this note actually has and that's what you have to impute here. Now for example here on 1120X1 Corporation A issued a promissory note to the design company here for design costs on a building that Corporation A is having designed here and they're, what they're going to do is they're going to pay for this the, these design costs here by issuing a note that has a face value here of $500,000 and the note is going to come due here in 1231 20X3 here three years after its issue date here. And the note has a stated interest rate of 4% that's payable at the end of each year here. That is, uh, they're going to have to, uh, Corporation A is going to have to pay a 4% interest rate on this $500,000 note that they're issuing here at the end of each year here. They have to pay it to corporate, uh, the design company here. Now, Corporation A cannot determine the fair value of the design services, the, what they're actually, their fair value here on when the note is issued here in 1120X1, nor is the note marketable. Therefore, on the basis of Corporation A's credit rating, and there's no collateral involved in this note, the prime interest rate at that date, and the prevailing interest on Corporation A's other debt, and other factors here, Corporation A goes out and imputes a 10% interest rate here in this note that's issued. And the question is here, uh, they're going to have uh, what interest rate should be used for recording this note and then we're going to look at it in terms of a notes payable here by Corporation A. Should they be using this 4% stated rate of interest on a note or the 10% imputed rate of interest on a note here. So let's go up and look at that here. So uh, again what interest rate should be used given the choice here. So based on that uh, stated rate of 4% and the imputed rate here of 10%. So this is the answer here. Based on the imputed Computed 10% interest rate, the fair value of the design service costs, that is their present value, that is the present value of the note issued here on 20X1, uh, can be determined and the interest expense here in the note is calculated using both the stated interest rate here of 4% and the imputed 10% uh, interest rate. And we're going to be using this effective interest method here for amortizing this note here to, um, to determine, uh, to calculate the actual interest rate costs on this note. So again here using the implied uh, imputed interest rate here of 10% and uh, we can and we can determine the present value of the note here. So we start out with the face value of the note and we look at it as a note payable here by Corporation A. Its face value is $500,000. That's what they're going to have to pay out three years here after the issue date here. So we can determine the present value of the note here and then we can determine the discount. In this case we're going to be looking at a discount on this note here. So for its present value, and that would be the fair value of those services provided, we're going to have to use this imputed interest rate here of 10%. And we have to discount uh, for the note here. We got a principal amount that we have to discount back here at 10%, and also those payments that we have to uh, of interest payments on the stated rate of interest on this note that we have to discount back. So first for the principal amount, we have that $500,000 amount here uh, discounted back three years here at 10%. You can put it into your financial calculator. In this case, I'm using Excel. So the principal amount here, uh, its present value is worth $375,657. Now the present value of the payments, that's simply discounting those $20,000 payments back. That would be the uh, $500,000 note and the 4% uh, interest rate on the note. So that's $20,000 per year here. Discount those back three payments here. Uh, discounted back here uh, at, at three payments here over those three years here discounted at 10 percent here their present value is worth forty nine thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars so the total amount of the principal amount here its present value and the payments their present value the present totaling those the total amount here or the present value of this note here is four hundred twenty five thousand three hundred ninety five dollars again present value of the note equals the fair value of the services received here based on that imputed interest rate here at 10%. All right, so 
uh, we're gonna you can look at here a discount on our notes payable that's simply the difference between the face amount when it becomes mature here uh, five hundred thousand dollars and its present value of four hundred twenty five thousand three ninety five gives us a discount on this notes payable of seventy four thousand six hundred and five dollars and that's what we're gonna have to amortize here so let's go look at it we're gonna be using this effective interest method here for our amortization we'll set up this amortization schedule here and let's start out with the payment amount here on this note. So now the note has that stated rate of interest of 4% here. So what we have is uh, $20,000 interest payments on the, based on that stated rate. Three of those here over the three year life of that note and that would be $60,000. Again those interest payments was that $500,000 note here at 4% per year. They're worth $20,000 per year here, the interest payment. Now we have to amortize our interest here. So for our interest expense here, that's actually that imputed interest rate or our estimated interest rate here of 10%. So this is going to be our actual in interest expense here in this note here. And we uh, can calculate that here as follows here. All you take is the starting uh, present value of that note here of 425000 $395. That's what we calculated up above here. Uh, take the beginning present value here at times the imputed interest rate here for the year of 10% here gives us an interest expense here for the first year of $42,540 here. $425,395 times 10% gives us the uh, interest expense here $42,540 for the first year. So our amortized amount here is really um, the difference here between our interest expense that we recognize $42,540 and the actual cash in a payment we made for that interest um, our payment on our interest due on that note each year. $20,000 gives us a discounted amount here of $22,540. So uh, new balance here just take the beginning balance of $425,395 add the uh, discount amount here or the amortized amount of $22,540 come up with our new balance here $447,935 time and in for the next uh, interest for the next period just take the, that beginning balance balance here times the imputed or estimated interest rate of 10% you're going to come up with your new interest expense for the next period compare that to the cash payment uh, of interest that's made that's going to give you your amortized interest here and then adding that to the big bending balance and you get your new balance here so what we have done here is we've amort we using this effective interest method here and the imputed rate of interest versus the stated rate of interest we amortize this note here from its present value here 425,395 up to its maturity value here of $500,000. So let's just look at our interest expenses here. So total interest expense based on the stated rate of interest here of 4%, 20,000 per year here. We got a uh, interest expense that we actually paid out in cash here of $60,000. Now we have the imputed rate of interest here on this note and that would be the what we're we have to actually recognize here on this note and that would be the total amount here of the interest of uh, based on that 10 percent imputed rate here of 300 $134,606 and our amortized amount you can see that's the amount that we had to amortize uh, that discount to that was 74,605 we actually calculated that above here but that's uh, that uh, figures here in with based on our actual interest expense here 100, 134,606 less the actual uh, actual ca uh, cash payments that we made here of $60,000 for interest gives us the discount amount here of 74,000 $605. Okay, so we've gone through our amortization schedule here. We determine our, uh, we know what act, our cash payments here on interest expenses, and then we know what are imputed or the what we have to recognize here on this note for the interest expense here. So we've, we've got those numbers here. Now let's look at how we record this here. So, all right. Going up here, looking at our journal entries. So let's start with our notes payable here. Uh, on 1120X1, we issued that note here for $500,000, and it's going to become payable here three years later here on 1231X3 here. So for our notes payable here on our balance sheet, 
we would credit are that note issued here at its face value for $500,000. Then we have to set up this discount account here, again, on a contra account to our notes payable, and that's for that discount that we calculated here of $74,605. So we would debit our discount here, that a contra account here, for that amount here. And then our balancing entry goes into the uh, building here, uh, the construction uh, costs here, this building, those design costs. And this would be an asset here on our balance sheet, and this is, uh, we'd be capitalizing those design costs here. So we debit our building account here for $425,395. That was the present value of the note here, or the fair value of the design costs here. Debit that. So our uh, for 400, debited for 425,395, and the debit amount here for 74,605 to our discount balances with our credit here for $500,000 on our notes payable. All right, so that takes care of uh, when we issue this note here. Now, when we make those actual interest payments here, um, we have those $20,000 payments here that we had uh, each year here, and based on the $500,000. A dollar face amount times a 4% stated rate of interest gives us three payments here at the end of each year here, uh, 1231x1 through x3 of $20,000. So we'd credit or reduce our cash account here by that amount here. Now, we've got um, interest expense here, and let's go over here on our income statement here. So we're going to have interest expense, and I've got it divided up here in two amounts here. First for the notes payable, that stated rate of interest, we would debit that here for $20,000. That was those cash payments that we had to make each year here. So for we got three main payments here, we debit our interest expense here for $20,000 each at the end of each year here, 1231x1 through x3. Now I have it also broken down here. We also have to recognize the interest expense here for the amortization of this um, note here. So what we would do here, so we we take our discount here in our notes payable and that comes right off our amortization schedule here using this effective interest method. So we credit or reduce our discount account and you can see the amounts here off our amortization for each year here at the end of the each uh, year here 1231x1 through x3 we've got a credit or reduce our discount here by 22,540 and they got the other amounts here and then uh, the uh, the debit amount here uh, balancing amount here would go to our interest expense here in our income statement here of 22,540 and you can see as they progress up here next year 24,793 uh, credit our discount here and then debit interest expense here for 24,793 and then the final year here so what we've done here is by issuing this note here we had the uh, we had a total interest cost here of both the interest expense that was amortized through the discount to this notes payable and then we had the actual cash payments here that we had to make each year here so I've, I've broken them out separately here but that would be our total interest expense here on this note all right so that takes care of uh, this note here that was exchange where we didn't have any market value on the, it wasn't readily marketed here and uh, the stated rate of interest here uh, varied from the uh, effective or the imputed rate of interest that we had. So we have to actually recognize the imputed or the actual interest, uh, total interest on this note here and we've done that here through this discount account here and then we were able to amortize that here using the effective interest method to recognize our interest expense here and then we also had the actual interest expense on those cash payments. All right, so that takes care of uh, this imputed or estimated interest rate here for a note.